<clears throat> the Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, both of them are here today, Kevin Quo and Jonathan Chan, also of FantasySixPack.net. Well, today we're kind of throwing a, a show together. We didn't have our usual uh, Tuesday show, so we're going to put together, eh, it's a bit of a hangover from Thanksgiving, I think. So we're, uh, we collected ourselves and now we're back and ready to go with some uh, fantasy topics. Now, a lot of the things we're going to be talking about, uh, a little bit of waiver wire will be post waiver wire, but um, at least you can uh, check with us and uh, see what your thoughts of the guys that you <laughs> that you decided to pick up. But uh, first of all, I want to welcome back, uh, John. You haven't been with us for a while, John. Uh, you missed last, well, was it I was here last week. Oh, no, it was, it was Kevin. Two weeks before, I couldn't come. Oh, that's right, it was Kevin. Hey, Kev, you're back. Yeah, I'm the guy who has been here for a while yeah it's been it's been a while guys i've missed you i've missed our weekly talks i've just been drowning in work so i apologize but i am back uh but, but before i uh leave you kevin uh now fantasy playoffs are upon us and you in the are in the scott fishbowl and you finished 18th and uh before yes, we yeah before we went to tape i wanted to ask you what are the what players got you to 18th place in this league? I mean, I ended up like I don't know 1,000 something. I'm in the bottom. I didn't even make the playoffs, or not even not even sniffing at it. So, ah, give us your story uh, of this season and uh, Scott Fishbowl. Yeah, I mean, my team is basically five players, but just like a hodgepodge of, of dudes kind of show up sometimes. So I've got uh, Christian McCaffrey, obviously, um, Dalvin Cook. That was my one-two pick. And then I think I grabbed Deshaun Watson with my third pick. And then uh, I've got Josh Jacobs, who's doing Ooh, well. good. Probably good. the offensive rookie of the year. And then I got Kyler Murray. Uh, Brandon Cooks has been a huge bust for me. Um, Mark Andrews is my best scorer at tight end. He's been carrying me. But other than that, my, the rest of my team is like super mid. There's like no great. Um, I Someone dropped. Latavius Murray, like the gate, and that was really helpful for like a couple weeks. Somebody but, dropped Latavius Murray. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what that was, but hey, they did it. So I re I picked him up. I picked him up immediately. I was able to start him for a couple weeks. Uh, all my receivers suck. Uh, I think Christian Kirk is my best receiver, or I guess Tyler Boyd. But I mean, yeah, I'm not really counting on receiver points. And start three to seven wide receivers, and I pretty much start three wide receivers. So it's basically um, your team I mean, consists of running backs and quarterbacks getting you through. Yeah, I mean, I, every week it's Tyler and Sean. Um, although this week I'm thinking about starting Jacoby Brissett against the Bucks, um, and then I've got you know the three running backs now. Alvin, Josh Jacobs, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, maybe I'll put in Latavius Murray. Maybe Bo Scarborough. I have a lot of this to make, and I'm, it's making me very anxious. Well, I want you to do, uh, do very well, and I want the best of luck to that. Uh, we talked about your fantasy team, uh, Jono. Um, I know you're in our uh, fantasy six pack league. You're in our playoffs. Uh, it's sort of our it's sort of our wild card week coming up. But um, uh, you were in first place for a while, and things sort of tapered off. But uh, uh, yeah, I was in first until week five because Alvin Kamara hasn't scored a touchdown since week three, and it's not helping. So that would be great if he could score a touchdown at some point. That's a, that's a good topic to start off with because he, because he and Saquon Barkley have been, you know, they haven't been what you paid for. They were they were top five starters, and I, I would say especially Saquon Barkley would be the most disappointing. Do you think that has, has anything to do with his injury? Is there just the Shermer offense on the Giants in general, Kev? Um, I think it's probably the Shermer offense in general. I think something else to be considered is that uh, Daniel Jones just doesn't check down like Eli does. It's like crazy that, you know, we're using Eli as a, as a prop up for why Saquon's not doing as well, but um, I think it's true. I think um, Eli used to check down to Saquon a lot, so he's not catching the ball as much, which is a huge difference in his production. Mm. And uh, speaking of Shermer and uh, other uh, coaches like Garrett, um, Ron Rivera fired. Jono, uh, I'll let you have the floor on this one. Uh, does this affect any of our fantasy players at all, or uh, for who, who's ever the interim? I don't know who the interim coach is going to be, but uh, should be should we be concerned if we if we're owners of Curtis Samuel at, at all in the rest of the? Uh... No, I mean they're not going to make Kyle Allen throw any less. He they already take the ball out of his hands as much as possible. Um, I don't think he can change much, honestly. In week in week fourteen, they're not going to overhaul the offense this late in the season. And a weird move to do that to a long tenured coach like this in this part of the season when you're not really fighting for a playoff spot. But eh, what are you gonna do, uh, Kev? Is it the end of Cam? 
Um, my guess is yes. It seems like they're kind of clearing house, uh, which makes sense when you consider that they've got a new owner in there and the new owner has no attachment to the quarterback, the GM or the coach. Now the quarterback is in prime position to leave. The coach is obviously gone. The GM probably gone. I wouldn't be surprised if they clean house and kind of start a rebuild there. Mm. Uh, and some uh, very sad news for owners of uh, Kalen Um Very sad news. He's going on uh, injured reserve. Um, Mister, I cannot. I I know that he couldn't he couldn't break his break a tackle if uh, if his life depended on it. But but John O, uh, I don't want to talk about him so much as the uh, as the Miami backfield. Uh, where are they going to go from here? Does, uh, are there any startable players? I know Laird is is one guy that was on your uh, list this week. Yeah, I, I don't know if Laird is startable, startable, but he will be the Miami starter uh, after Belage went down uh, this week. Laird came in and took 10 carries, uh, gained five yards. Um, just amazing Kalen Bellage numbers right there. But he did outtouch the other running back, Miles Gaskin, 14 to three. Um, if there's anybody that's the ad here in Miami, it is Laird because he also did catch a, uh, four, four passes for 43 yards and found the end zone. So he had a good fantasy day and they got the Jets. So I'm not counting on a super high scoring game. So I think Laird has a chance to rack up some carries. Uh, Kev, uh, Kalen Balaj in Dynasty, uh, are you holding on to him? No, I really could care less. Like, <laughs> he's so bad at football. Like, just watching his game film, it's pretty bad. And yeah. The fact that he's be, getting beat out by Patrick Laird, no offense to Patrick Laird, but that doesn't say much for you. Kalen <laughs> Balaj has more touchdowns this season than Alvin Kamara. That's because Alvin Think about that. Uh, I think, think about that. That's really bad. That is that is bad. That's because I I consider Kalen Balaj the uh, Nathan Peterman of running backs. So I mean he is so bad. I mean it's it's I I thought well oh, he's finally got the backfield to him. Like this was a couple of weeks ago. I thought oh here we go again. Kalen Balaj got the backfield there. And every time there's a waiver rush for him, the waiver rush gets less and less. <laughs> Less, you know, I, I never seen a, a, a Kalen Balazs is going to have the backfield to himself and there's just nobody charging out to run out to get Kalen Balazs this time. Everyone, uh, everyone uh, had given up on him. Anyways, uh, yeah, he's, he's the other guy in the news. What else we got in the news that we can, uh, uh, we, we talked about Pat Shermer now, uh, uh, just reading from RotoWire here, speaking Tuesday, Giants co-owner Steve Tisch declined to provide a vote of confidence in coach Pat Shermer or general manager Dave Gettleman. Kev, are we looking at changes on the Giants? Um, as far as coaching? Or, yeah. I mean, coaching and general manager, do you think they're going to just um, start off fresh? Um, I mean, it's hard to say. Uh, I guess with the rookie quarterback, I always tend to think that you give the rookie quarterback head coach combination more than a single year. But um, you never know with the Giants. They kind of seem to be all over the place with their just, um, I, I don't know. To me, I'm not even just Daniels like the guy, like their future starting quarterback. Like he just doesn't seem really good to me. Seems like he's had a lot of hype because of that one game against Detroit. But since then, he's been absolutely awful. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you, I, I know he had three interceptions yesterday. Um, he is, since that Lions game, been pretty dreadful. Uh, he had that one game against the Jets that was pretty big, but like nothing. He's, he's not like, I mean, he's in that kind of like, Darnold range where it's like I'm not really sold on him being a starting quarterback in the league but I guess I could see it uh, but for like for me there's like no reason to believe that he's going to be like the one no I don't uh, uh, I, I well I, I I don't think he's doing well but I, I do think there is growth potential his problem is securing the football basically what, what do you think of uh, Daniel Jones this year John are you uh, a little more optimistic or well, I mean, like Kevin said, it's tough to tell if he's going to be that guy in the future. He shows flashes that he can be a starter. It's just like you said, um, he just throws way too many, well, throws a lot of interceptions and he fumbles way, way too much. He doesn't uh, acknowledge the rush. And like Kevin said earlier, he doesn't check down. So he wastes a lot of opportunities and he loses the offense a lot of yards. Just check down to your all world running back. It's not that difficult. And it pads your own stats too. So not quite sure why if it's if it's him not wanting to do it or if it's Shermer scheming something out, but unless that changes, there's a big hole in his game that's not really going to get fixed. Yeah, he's I I don't know who the quarterback coach is on the uh, Giants, but he isn't doing a very good job. If it's that, uh, needs some fixing up. But uh, uh, John, I'll stick with you on this. Um, Jerry Jones says uh, Jason Garrett has a future in the 
in the NFL. Uh, he thinks uh, Jason Garrett will be coaching next year in the NFL. Did he specify kind of, for the Cowboys? He never said anything about the Cowboys. He just said, "Yeah, I don't know. Like, if honestly, you, you I understand maybe not wanting to fire him now because you're, you know, week thirteen, week fourteen. You don't want to shake things up that much uh, this late in the season, but." Not firing him in the offseason would be a really, like, awful move. It's obvious that Garrett's not taking this team anywhere. And it could have just been a, you know, a sly, he can coach somewhere, just not here. I don't know. It would be ridiculous if they still kept him after all this. Well, Kevin, we discussed this this before, and his name's been cropping up. I mean, they're in the playoff hunt. Does does Garrett actually need this kind of pressure, or, or do you think this is just a motivating thing, or...? What do you think? I mean, whether it's, you know, whether he needs it or not, the pressure should be real. I mean, he's been keeping this team. I'm not saying, I, I'm not saying he's been holding the team back, but I mean, everyone always says the Cowboys have one of those talented rosters. Um, they've got the blue chip players all over the place. And for whatever reason, every year they go eight and eight. Um, this was a chance for them with the Eagles not being great and the Giants and Redskins both sucking to really, you know, take hold of the division and win it for the first, for, win it back to back for the first time in like a dozen years. And, you know, they've kind of flopped after a strong start. So. Um, at this point, I think a coaching change has to be made. Whether or not Jerry Jones is going to make it, I, I don't know. But it's not like he doesn't deserve the pressure. Well, he wants to uh, get the Oklahoma coach, uh, Lincoln, I forget his name, uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. Riley. I think his name is Lincoln Riley, the head coach of, of uh, Oklahoma. I think he wants to go. He's also had, he's had Barry Switzer, who was Oklahoma coach as well at one time, long before you were born. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's, that's interesting, but I feel like if I, I mean, this is just speaking for myself, but if I was looking for a new coach for the Dallas Cowboys, I'd be looking for like a veteran who commands respect or something like that. Not necessarily like a young college coach. Cause I think their thing is that one, they're kind of just, they're kind of boring on offense and that, I mean, theoretically, if you have Kellen Moore, he should be able to, hopefully they'll keep him around cause he's shown some promise. But the main thing is that they just seem like undisciplined and they don't seem to show up or, and do well in close games or big games. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure that's something a college coach can help with. Jono, what's your two cents on the Cowboys? I mean, all I can contribute is that realistically, they just need to make a change. I think the team's grown stagnant under Garrett. Um, they just, they're not going any further. They're not, whatever is the problem with them. And like, like Kevin said, in big games, Garrett's not the guy. And however they choose or however they think needs to be changed, it's just something has to be different because they're not going anywhere with the current coaching staff and the way they're playing. I had to admit, I did a double take on Thanksgiving uh, when um, in garbage time, uh, a receiver called Bryant caught a touchdown. And I thought, what? Bryant? <laughs> Did they did they did they suddenly flip to old clips and there was and t- I thought that was very strange that Bryant scored a touchdown for the Cowboys at some I don't know it's some guy way down the depth chart I don't know he just must have just got him off the practice squad or something but, yeah that was a fun one I I, I kind of wonder if that was on purpose just to just to stick it to uh, fantasy people so I always think that when I, when I I know it was a garbage time touchdown but I mean it was still I don't know kind of fun but. Uh, uh, while we're on that subject of that particular game, I'm going to mention, uh, I know we're not doing game, game recaps, but I want to talk about, uh, the Bills, Jono. Are they, uh, oh, do are they I for have real? To? Yeah, no, I know. Uh, are they a threat to, threat to the Patriots? Everybody's a threat to the Patriots with this current offense. It looks disgusting. It's actually terrible. I, I would like, I would rather watch the Dolphins offense. The offense is terrible. Well, rant alert. They, <laughs> Go they on. shouldn't have released Josh Gordon. No, they should. That's it. <laughs> like there's no outside threat now like the everybody can double Edelman inside and there's no outside threat nobody really cares about covering Mohamed Sanu or Enkil Harry or Jacoby Myers you double Edelman and the offense just falls apart at least you can put somebody on you have to you force the defense to put somebody on Gordon even if he's not you know flash anymore he still demands more coverage than anybody else on the Patriots does mm, Brutal. That's, that's a fair point but I like what I see out of Jacoby Myers not so much. I don't know. He's, for some reason, Brady isn't targeting and Keel Harry as much as like, a lot of people thought. But uh, he targeted Harry, Harry once. Sucks. He targeted him once. It was an interception because Harry couldn't outmuscle his uh, outmuscle the corner. Corner who is four inches and thirty pounds lighter than him. Yep. Yeah, that's not very good. Go, not Pat. Very, go. 
Not very good at all. So I guess uh, the better own of the two, of course, is uh, I guess uh, Jacoby Myers. At least there's some kind of chemistry going on there with. Uh, uh, yep. Did he make your Did he make your waiver wire, uh, Jacoby Myers, or is he? Myers uh, made it last week. He made it last week. Uh, yeah. Uh, still viable guy to get if you're. Uh, I mean, if you want to trust the Pats' offense, it, it's it, it is against KC this week, so I'm assuming it's going to be a pretty high scoring game. But who knows? It right. was last year. But to my other question, Sean McDermott and the Bills, Kev. John, I wanted to go on a, on a, on a rant and I let him of, of the Patriots because the Bills are in that division. So I'll let you, uh, tackle the Bills. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, the Bills look what do surprisingly they need? good. I mean, they're not, um, they're not a fluke. I think they're really well coached. I think that's the main thing. They're really well coached. And Josh Allen has been actually one of the better quarterbacks in the league for, um, a few weeks now. Uh, he's really developed well. Um, their offense, I guess they've kind of, not ask him to do too much, which is probably the best thing you can do for a young quarterback. And their defense is making plays and, and doing enough to shut teams down. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen next week when they play the Ravens. Um, just because, uh, I don't think, I mean, I guess if you count the Cowboys as a good team, then, then the Bills haven't really, pay, have only played one really good team, but I don't really count the Cowboys as a good team. So they really haven't played anyone special since. So, um, I'll be interested to see how that game goes. Uh, but I mean, the AFC East winning is pretty solid. Yeah. I've actually done the math on this. All the, if the Bills lose one more game this year, all the Pats have to do is beat the Dolphins and Bengals, and we would have the tiebreaker. So I'm assuming well, the Pats' offense is good enough. I'm assuming the Pats can beat the Dolphins and Bengals. I don't know. That's that's two teams that got one more we- win last week than the Patriots did. Damn, best that I've heard all week. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it's one it's one thing to get them going. They can use they can use those teams as punching bags to you know to sort of help out. Um, I wanted to go through some of the uh, uh, some of the waiver people now. Now when this when this comes out, all the waiver things will be done. Uh, but uh, I want to get you guys' take on some of the uh, some of the waiver waiver quarterbacks uh uh this is from uh the uh, the waiver wire rankings from fantasy pros which is shout out to the uh, fantasy pros make sure that you go to fantasy pros check out give a, give them a little plug because uh our site uh we uh we are partnered with uh fantasy pros with, uh, our uh the, there's a little card if you uh right next to their name for our articles that that uh, we have so um anyways uh Top of the list, and this is quarterbacks now. Number one on the list is Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Kev, what do you think of Ryan Tannehill as a streamer? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it somehow makes sense. Uh, he's been playing really well. Uh, I know he's piling up fantasy points over the last couple of weeks because he's adding a little bit of rushing to his stuff, which is fantastic. Um, but mostly, like, somehow that offense has been really, really impressive with him in there instead of Mariota. I kind of thought it would just be a lateral move. But um, what can I say? It has not been. Um, Tannehill's good. I think last week was a bit of a letdown against the Col- uh, the Colts. But, I mean, they've won uh, five out of the last six games they played with him. And he's had multiple touchdowns in all but one of the games. And even that game, he added a rushing touchdown. So it still scored to five game points. I mean, the guy's just going to get it done next week against Oakland. Something to be scared of. Um, I think he's a good streamer for the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Oakland, Houston, and New Orleans. Uh is the uh, fantasy playoffs uh, or his fantasy playoff opponents, um, and uh, two of those are at home, which is always not that that means much unless it's defenses. I always considered home defenses a little slightly better than, but with quarterbacks, eh, it doesn't matter. I don't think. Okay, John, my question to you is that it's the fantasy playoffs, and you've got these four quarterbacks to pick. You've got I'm going to give you Ryan Fitzpatrick, Kyle Allen, Gardner Minshew, or Andy Dalton. You've got those four quarterbacks to pick up for your for your fantasy playoffs. Who are you going to take? Oh, jeez. Um, like I'll go Fitzpatrick. Uh, he's been good the last two weeks. He scored a combined 52 points. Uh, the Dolphins offense just went nuts last week. Season high in points. They scored touchdowns on five straight drives. They look good. And of course, Fitzpatrick just throws everything now because the Miami running backs are no offense to Patrick Laird, uh, nobody's. So I think they're gonna have to they're gonna have to throw. Uh, Fitzpatrick's gonna air it out a lot. And Devontae Parker is a wide receiver one. Um, for all the trash that we talked about him for the last two years on this podcast, Devontae Parker's done it. And uh, yeah, uh, Fitzpatrick, there, you just know there's gonna be enough volume there. Um, Minshew has Fournette takes stuff away from him. Uh, Dalton's gonna be average either way. And Kyle Allen, I'm not even talking about Kyle Allen. Uh, 
McCaffrey's going to get like 30 carries next week. So, yeah, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, his uh, lineup this this week is uh, he's against the Jets, Giants, and then the Bengals. So that's not too bad. Kev, would you would you uh, would you take uh, Fitzpatrick as well for a lineup like that? Or I mean, logic tells me yes, but then. I just know that Fitzpatrick over a, after a quote unquote big win against the Dolphins is going to just turn back into a pumpkin. But, um, I guess logically, if I was desperate enough to do one of those, then yeah, we'd, we'd go with Fitzpatrick. Right. Um, I should mention Kyle Allen has Atlanta at Atlanta home versus Seattle and at Indianapolis Colts. But I don't particularly like Kyle Allen. I think he's a bit mistake prone at the moment and. I don't know what the coaching situation is going to, how he's going to be coached for this or told how he's going to do. But again, like you say, John, uh, it's probably going to be in the hands of, uh, of Christian McCaffrey for this. Uh, Gardner Minchu, you guys completely ignored him. Uh, he plays the Chargers at home and then he's at, uh, the Raiders and then at Atlanta for his next three. I mean, Those are his next. I mean, the Chargers aren't a bad defense. You know, just Philip Rivers keeps giving the uh, opposing offense the ball and the defense has to, is put into bad situations. I think, I don't think, like, Minshew, he's better than Foles, but I don't think I would risk, uh, I, I don't think I would risk Minshew in the playoffs in what could be a pretty low scoring game. So that's why I went Fitzpatrick over Minshew. And of course, Dalton has Cleveland, the Patriots, and, uh, Miami. He, the only game at home is, is the Patriots. So it's at Cleveland, home against New England, and at Miami. Uh, so Eddie Dalton, you guys didn't even give even give him a even give him half a thought for a fa- for your for your playoffs. But uh, so Ryan Fitzpatrick, I guess Tannehill, Tannehill above everybody, and then Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think we're agreed on that, eh? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to some. Let's move on to the waiver running backs. I have to say, running backs this season have been less than uh, impressive. That you've picked up off the waiver wire. There hasn't been really any great names, but uh, but I think the most important thing to remind ourselves is is about handcuffing, and especially uh, the top waiver grab this week is uh, Alexander Madison. Now we don't know. Uh, what the condition is of Dalvin Cook. Apparently, he's good to go. Um, some people are speculating about the snap count or something like that, whether or not. Kev, um, Alexander Madison, uh, obviously, if you owned Dalvin Cook, he would have been a good guy just to handcuff throughout the whole season just in case, right? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, the only place I have – it's a little different than Scott Fish, but the only place I have Dalvin Cook is in Scott Fish Bowl, and I've had Madison on my bench all year. Never started him, but, I mean, you just got to have him because, like you said, he's so valuable, Dalvin Cook going out. Yeah, because you never know these days, uh, even if it's just one or two games, you, you can't, uh, in the fantasy playoffs, even if a guy's out for a concussion these days, a concussion, depending on, uh, which, uh, specialist is looking into the case, um, your, your, uh, running back can be out one, two, or sometimes even three games, as, as many as that, uh, depending on if he's had a concussion issue before, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Which happens, uh, John, do you have Alexander Madison anywhere? No, he was handcuffed in every league after like week two or three. So I do not. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm seeing if, uh, I can get him somewhere. I have, uh, Dalvin Cook in one league and <coughs> I need, to, I need to try and get that sorted. I did not handcuff, uh, Madison. I don't think he's available. I think he, I think he got drafted. I think people just been draft, drafted him and hoarded him. I don't think he's anywhere, uh, anywhere for me to get i kind of wish he was uh yeah i think there's one week where he's, where he's available but uh next guy up that i want to talk about is raheem mostert kev ah uh, are we rushing out to get this raheem mustard you see a must start Mostert. Um, nice i see what you did there <coughs> <laughs> i don't really think so i think the niners offense is just too balanced too I mean, if you need like a flex, then I might go with that. But um, as like a, a running back too, I'm not sure he's a must start. Uh, I still think Tevin Coleman is is the guy there. Mostert, for whatever reason, did better this week. But um, Coleman is the guy, and if Breda comes back, then it's you're going to a three way split, so makes it even you know more convoluted. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. How do you feel about uh, must start? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Um, the Niners, just, there's too many options back there, especially with Brita coming back. I, from what I've seen this year, I think if Mostert gets more opportunities, he's probably the best back there. I don't know if that's bold anymore to say, just because every time one of them gets hurt, Mostert always looks like the better option in, in, in the, uh, in the backfield split. But there are, um, some stats here that I saw on Twitter 
that uh, for the Niners running backs, like the rate of runs to gain certain amount of yardage, Mostert leads in every category. So like positive yardage, uh, runs that gain five yards, runs that gain 10 yards, runs that gain first downs, Mostert leads all of them. Um, he's looked like the best running back, but I don't think he has the opportunity to really be a must start. He's just... There. Yeah, I think where they're expecting Matt Breda back to... Yes, they are. He could have played this week, but they held him out one more to, for the... Uh, for the for, for next week. So it's it's always up in the air, even with uh, <clears throat> I mean Tevin Coleman. Uh, I, it's it's really it's a, it's a hot hand backfield. Let's face it. I think that's what it is. Uh, I think who's ever got the hot hand, that's who they're going to give it to. If if Breda if Breda doesn't <clears throat> if Breda doesn't show anything, they'll put somebody else out there. All right, who's got the hot hand? I think that's how Shanahan's working it. I think he's just going hot hand. So who's ever got? Oh, it's oh it's his day. So and it's been working. That's the way I feel about it. I, you can't trust any of them. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I would trust Monster unless I really had to. If I owned Dalvin Cook and there was, I don't know, if some issue comes up during the week of about him, uh, then I guess you got to play him. But I think that's pretty much. I think that's about it. But no, nah, Mostert is not a must start. <laughs> so uh, good that I've worn that joke out. Uh, next is uh, a little interesting guy. <laughs> Darwin Thompson. Uh, I knew you were going to bring him up. He has to be brought up. Um, but uh, Damian Williams hasn't been ruled out. Uh, uh, Daryl Williams pretty much has been ruled out for Week 14. Um, McCoy has really gotten scaled back. I watched the game uh, against the Raiders, and basically McCoy didn't have a didn't have a hardly a touch in the fourth quarter. It was all just they just let Darwin Thompson run with it. And the guy was he was getting so many touches. He was so tired. I mean, he got. He got the bulk of you don't just give the guy nine carries in in the fourth quarter like I guess they were just wanting to run out run out the time because it was you know the Raiders had been <clears throat> you know uh, looks explosive looks really good uh, breaks tackles um, uh, Jono uh, I'll get you your first shot at Darwin Thompson um I'm not rushing for Darwin Thompson regardless I I think it's actually a bad thing that he got all those carries in the fourth. Uh, they were clearly saving Shady for next game. The game was like forty to three. They didn't want Shady to get hurt in the fourth quarter, like uh, like James Conner did for the Steelers a few weeks ago, who hasn't played since uh, in a blowout game. They were letting the rookie take all the take all the garbage time snaps, and they brought in Spencer Ware for a physical today. So clearly, this could again be a three or four way backfield, depending on Damian Williams's health. I uh, don't know how those carries are going to shake out. And they get the Patriots defense. Not the offense, just the defense. So I think uh, it's not a great not a great look either way. You're looking at a timeshare against a good run defense. I don't. It's not worth blowing whatever of your wallet is left. Um, what about you, uh, Kev? Uh, any surprise value for uh, Darwin Thompson? Um, I kind of tend to agree. This I kind of tend to lean the same way. Um, I think the more telling thing is the Spencer Ware thing because if they really trusted Darwin Thompson, they would just let him cook, but apparently not. So um, we'll see. I think it's going to be gonna well. They be need a third back Darwin. on the roster, really. Uh, so I mean, if Damian overrated. Williams can't go, I can understand they want a little depth there. Because what if another guy goes down? It'd be just one. They would have just one back left. That's all you need, man. You only need one back. You only <sighs> need. Uh, you just need Darwin. Tom- I mean, Darwin Thompson was a guy I was super high on at the beginning of the year, but kind of seems a little late for this kind of change to be happening. I don't know. Some say. Some say league winner. Uh, and I'm talking not just not just not just regular yeah, I mean, uh, Joe's I would, I would on say, Twitter here. I would say that if you have the if you have the bench spot to do it, I mean, Darwin, that's the exact kind of move that you should be trying to do, uh, like an up, high upside move, low downside. You know, drop like a guy like, I don't know, you can drop, probably drop like Latavius Murray or Jamal Adams or probably even drop like David Johnson. Like that's done with. Um, drop Kenyon Drake, drop Duke Johnson, drop one of those low upside guys. You're not going to start anyways if you're in the playoffs to swing for the fences. All right. So basically, leave. he shouldn't be rostered. Leave him on the waiver wire. Just leave him out there. Um, I, again, it depends on your... Uh, I think if you need a start, then, I mean, hopefully you don't, you're not in that position if you're in the playoffs, but if you need a start, and I'm not really going for him, but if you need, um, if you want to swing for that upside and you have the ability to do so, then he's worth a grab. My take on Darwin Thompson is, is, uh, is, uh, pick him up, see how he does against New England, um, if, see his workload, see if, uh, Andy Reid is, is indeed going to give him uh, some run. I think he probably will. He showed up quite well. I mean, the Raiders still had their uh, number one uh, defense out there, and um, a lot of uh, 
And it's not just uh, not just other people saying that uh, Darwin Thompson could be a league winner. I th- the only problem with D- uh, Darwin Thompson, from my point of view, is is that eh, he's kind of just a little bit too little. Now, granted, he's got the same kind of weight, but he doesn't have the same frame. He's got the same weight as a guy like Christian McCaffrey and a lot of other backs, but he hasn't got the frame. And the, but I don't know. He's a little guy, and he's he's very um, elusive. Uh, he does he does make people miss. He's a, he's probably more. Uh, I think he's more dynasty worthy, but if they get him out there and give him some run, and if he's, uh, and again, he's probably has some surprise value for the Patriots, which it's a game that they really, really need to win to, uh, to ensure that uh, the Raiders don't catch them up through the back door. Because the Raiders aren't, the Raiders aren't done. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Moving right along. Uh, Jordan Wilkins. Now, uh, Jonathan Williams had a bad game, Kev. Uh, Jordan Wilkins, do you think this, his time has come if Marlon Mack is still not ready? Which probably in all likelihood is not. Um, I think it's another one of those situations where you can kind of look at it like the Niners, kind of just hot hand. I don't really trust Jordan Wilkins, Naheem Hines, or Jonathan Williams. Um, hopefully you're not in a position where you have to start them, but uh, I think it's just going to be a hot hand, see who's doing well that day, who see who's good for the matchup. All right. And uh, what are you about, John Should we, Can we keep uh, Jonathan Williams, or do you think the ride is over? Uh, I mean, if you need a running back, I think you kind of have to keep him. He showed that with volume, he can kind of do it, but like Kevin said, this is not something you'd hope you have to trust uh, during the fantasy playoffs, but eh, and the Tampa Bay run defense is pretty good. I think this is going to be a lot of uh, Naheem Hines and Jacoby Brissett throwing it. I don't think either one of Wilkins or Williams, I don't think either of them are good plays this week. And I was going to actually get you to speak to Naheem Hines uh, for a bit. I guess he's just uh, the same role as he ever was. Yep, his role never changes. His role never changes. Uh, but uh, uh, Kev, I'll uh, speak to you on... Uh, well, uh, no, I'll stick with you, John. Um, Peyton Barber. Um, now, apparently, Ronald Jones, uh, he missed a blitz pickup, and so... <clears throat> uh, so this didn't throw the he coach too much. He got benched. He got benched because he didn't pick up a blitz properly or something. He missed a blitz pickup assignment. And the coach was actually kind of, you know, he's pretty mean about it. Actually, you know, Bruce Arians, he's, he usually doesn't come out. I mean, he, I mean, he's kind of been down on uh, guys like O.J. Howard. He doesn't like O.J. Howard. He doesn't like uh, players who just don't fall in line. and uh, Like one step out of line and, you you know, you're, you're cooked. I mean, he's almost a little more draconian than Bill Belichick, if I might say so. But uh, so um, do you think this is a long-term doghouse when we need Peyton Barber to win you the fantasy? Could he be the fantasy winner? No. No. Uh, Short answer. <laughs> if you win a fantasy matchup or the fantasy playoffs because you started Peyton Barber, then more power to you. But that is a rough, rough play that you can't realistically make. They've been trading good and bad games for the last three weeks. Like just looking at Jones's game log, he has in standard one point, twelve points, and zero point eight points. Like that's not something you can trust with him or Barber. They're going to keep flip-flopping whoever hot hand or whoever happens to be put in at the goal line, which they seem to rotate. You can't really, you, you can't put uh, any reasoning on it, any logical reasoning, and you're throwing a dart with these two, Barbara and Jones. Kev, uh, what's your thoughts on the Tampa Bay backfield and uh, Bruce Arians' ways? Yeah, pretty much the same. I mean, if you're starting Ronald Barber, you're taking a huge risk. If you're starting, I'm sorry, if you're starting Peyton Barber, you're taking a huge risk. If you're starting Ronald Jones, you're taking a similarly big risk. Um, it's going to be hard to do it either way. Uh, that Tampa Bay offense is kind of based on the, on the pass. And, um, you know, it's kind of whoever, uh, I hate to say it again, but it's, it's another high hand situation. It's just whoever's doing better seems to do it. It doesn't matter, you know, going into it, who seems like they have a better matchup. It just seems like whoever Bruce Arians feel, feels like giving the ball, that's uh-huh. who's going to get it that week. So, uh, before I get into the wide receivers, I want to do a little bit of a, uh, Kind of a, kind of an intermission, uh, kind of a break between things. I want to get your take, Kevin, on this, this brand new, uh, the, you can buy the t-shirt now. It's, it's decaf Metcalf. Uh, I don't know if you ever, if you watched the game on Monday, but Joe Tessator, uh, accidentally called, um, DK Metcalf. He called him, at, this was right after a fumble because he, he, he caught the ball and he fumbled and actually gave the, uh, Minnesota Vikings a chance to uh, win the game. It was at that point in the game and he accidentally called, uh, DK Metcalf, decaf, decaf Metcalf. And they've got a t-shirt already for it. 
Your thoughts. That's pretty funny. Did he actually didn't mean to do it or did he do it on accident? He accidentally said it. Yeah, oh boy. Um, no, I didn't watch the game, but that's pretty funny. I mean, Tessator and Booger have been hilarious this season. <laughs> I think they've been just, I think they've been just awful. I think they got to get rid of them. I don't like this team. I've never liked this team at all. John, do you like this team? This, this, uh, I haven't watched a game with full commentary in a very long time. So, sure. All I read are the, is everybody ripping Booger the next day on Twitter? So, <laughs> I can't, I can't fairly, fairly judge. Well, it was, it was, it was Joe Tessitore this time. But the thing is, is that this one really stuck and people like it. They think decaf Metcalf because, uh, Seattle. Huh? Actually funny. Decaf. Decaf Metcalf, yeah, because uh, Starbucks. Decaf Metcalf is funny. Uh, I'll give them credit. Yeah, it's because it started. Yeah, do a, do a Twitter search for Decaf Metcalf, and you'll see it. it was, it's gone viral. So Joe Tessator, uh, he's uh, yeah. Decaf Metcalf. I like it. And uh, they got a T-shirt. You know, it's sort of made like to look like a Starbucks because it's uh, the Starbucks uh, franchise began in Seattle. So uh, I guess there's sort of a, a connection there. So. Anyway, all right, moving on to the wide receivers on the waiver wire. Uh, at top of the list, uh, Jono, is uh, Zach Pascal of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, it looks like T.Y. Hilton might not even see uh, the field for the rest of the season. So, uh, Zach Pascal, he's... Um, He's a guy that I was kind of high on earlier, and I might have been, might have been a bit, you might not have been ripe yet, but uh, he's certainly ripe now, would you say? Um, I mean, I guess. There's not much else. If T.Y.'s missing the rest of the season, sure. But Pascal, he's been up and down all season, more down than anything else. It's tough to trust, um, but the Bucks defense, the Bucks secondary is not good. So, yeah, go for it. <laughs> if, you need, if you need a... Uh, a flex and you're a deep league or something like that, I guess you really, if you're starting Zach Pascal, you're desperate enough as it is. So yeah. go for it. Well, you, right, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to start Zach Pascal. You're going to start, it. you're going to start him. Well, so I, I, I don't see why not. Zach Pascal or Terry McLaurin. Oh yeah. yeah well, in that case. Go. Yeah. Go for his, uh, go. I would say if that's your choice, if you've got a choice between Terry McLaurin and Zach Pascal, I think it too. Cause look at it, uh, Eric Ebron's out, right? And you've got T.Y. Hilton's out. So who they got? They got just Jack Doyle now. So it's got to be. Somebody, yeah, somebody's got to fill those gaps. The Bucks stink. Yeah, I'm going big. Yeah. Speaking of going big, AJ Brown of the Tennessee Titans. Kev, uh, your thoughts? Looks like uh, Corey Davis is an absolute zero, zero fantasy value forever and ever. I think, I think we can. I think the final nails are in the coffin. I don't think he stays with Tennessee next year. I think he goes to another team. But uh, AJ Brown looks like the guy. Yeah, I mean, been saying this for a while. Corey Davis is not that good. Um, just then again, AJ Brown isn't been consistent either. Um, the Titans' offense is basically uh, Tannehill spreading the ball out to whoever's open, and then Derrick Henry doing his thing. So uh, it's hard to really have too much faith in that offense either way. Although they have the Raiders this week, so AJ Brown's not a terrible start. And like, yeah, again, uh, Tennessee probably has Tennessee players have probably have the best uh, lineup for fantasy play, playoffs. If you've got uh, like Derrick Henry, if you're lucky enough to have taken Derrick uh, Henry, who is probably going to be your fantasy winner, I would, I would say he's probably the guy to watch um, in the fantasy playoffs. And Tennessee are in contention, which always helps the initiative of your players. So, uh, Jono, I, I know that uh, in our league you have AJ Brown, don't you? You should be happy about that. Are you happy? Are you comfortable starting him for your fantasy? Playoffs? I don't think I, I don't think I started him once all season. Uh, I've had, I've had him on the bench since like week three. I don't think I've started him once. Uh, it's, it's, he's the classic boom bust guy, right? Cause he's great big playability, but if he doesn't break a long one, then you, realistically, you're not getting all that much. Last week was a good middle game for him. Um, but it, it still wasn't amazing, yeah. but like, like you said, with the, the matchups that Tennessee has coming up, uh, there are much worse wide receiver plays out there. Uh, like Tyrell Williams, who I played over AJ Brown three weeks in a row now. So I'm probably just going to cut him because, yeah, he's getting cut super hard. Just watch for him on the waiver tomorrow morning, guys. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, you're right about boom bust uh, at Carolina, uh, 81 yards. Kansas City, 17 yards, four receptions. And, and then Jacksonville, 135 yards. And then this week uh, against uh, the, the Colts, he had just 45 yards. So you're exa- there's there's that's exactly right. That is boom bust, boom bust. So I guess uh, at Oakland it'll be a boom, and he's got a Houston. You think so, wouldn't you? You would think so. You would think so. Um, speaking of guy on the rise, I guess is uh, Anthony Miller with uh, with Gabriel out. I guess uh, Anthony Miller uh, is he a guy we're going with in your fantasy play, John? Is he worth? Uh, yeah. Um... 
I mean, the targets have skyrocketed um, over the last three weeks. I mean, I went over this in my waiver article, but it was over the first, you know, nine games, he had 17 catches for 218 yards. Over the last three, he's caught 21 passes for 271 yards. Um, just with all he needed was opportunity. Everything else is staying the same. The yards per reception, uh, like the yard after catch, the, the like air yards, it's all the same. He's just getting more targets and it's working out beautifully for him. Uh, he's averaging 11 targets a game, and if he's available, I think he's he's going to do pretty well. Uh, Nagy likes to throw with Trubisky for whatever reason, so let's go with that. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, Anthony Miller. I, I I mean, it's still the Bears' offense, but if you need a, like a flex, uh, he's probably going to be a little bit more stable than AJ Brown. He don't, I don't think he has the big play ceiling, but I think he's going to. He'll probably be somewhere in the middle just because of the sheer number of targets he's been getting over the last three weeks. Uh, he has Dallas. Uh, at home and then at Green Bay and then home versus the Chiefs in mm. weeks. So uh, that's that's kind of rough. Uh, Kev, I'm going to sort of... greatest. Uh, well, no, no, it's not the greatest. Uh, Kev, uh, I'm going to just... I'm going to sort of... say not the greatest skill, but... You can add a little bit more if you want to, uh, Anthony Miller, if you want, but I'd kind of like to move along to uh, James Washington of the... Sure. I got nothing on I got nothing on Anthony Miller. Trubisky throwing up, so <laughs> count me out. Uh, James Washington of the... Uh, um, he's had two straight games of, uh, well, I mean, 90 yards, 49 yards, 98 yards, 111 yards. Uh, Duck, uh, Duck Hodges is in there. Um, obviously the pickup, uh, one of the pickups of the week, right? Uh, James Washington. Yeah. I mean, he's shown better chemistry with, uh, Duck Hodges than Mason Rudolph has. And Mason Rudolph was the guy's college quarterback. So, uh, like Jonathan and I were talking pre-show, it's a little bit weird with, uh, the same thing is happening with Terry McLaurin. He's not exactly shining with his college quarterback in there either. Um, so I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not big on James Washington. I think he's a big play guy. He's either going to get you, you know, like a 60 yard touchdown or he's going to get you absolutely nothing. And, um, hopefully if you're in the playoffs, at this point, you're not really looking for that. You're looking for something a little more stable for DFS. Then I think he's probably worth a dart. All right. Uh, any thoughts, uh, John, on James Washington? Yeah, same kind of thing. Um, he's one of the league leaders in air yards per target. But like Kevin said, if you don't, if he doesn't get that long touchdown, then you're in for a disappointing day. And uh, I guess uh, just I'm just going to do a couple more. Uh, Cole Beasley, if he's available, uh, can he help you in your fantasy playoffs? Uh, doing very well. Uh, this, he's having a very good year on the Bills, generally. Um, he's, he's gone over 10 fantasy points. One, two, three, four, five, six times this season. Um, he had a hundred, he had over a hundred yards, uh, against Dallas, which, uh, wasn't, wasn't actually an easy matchup going in there. Well, that was a revenge game. You can't count that one for real. Hmm. Well, I, well, I don't know, revenge game. They all welcomed him back. They were, the people were cheering when he scored a touchdown in, in Buffalo. I mean, in, in Dallas. I'm just going to say that Beasley scored five touchdowns in his last seven games. Um, and his targets have, he's 16 targets in the last two games. I think he's trending up. Uh, and Beasley, yeah, that can definitely help. All right. So help me figure this out. Are we going with Beasley this week or are we going with Zach Pascal? Hmm. Beasley has Baltimore. No. <laughs> Beasley plays uh, Beasley plays Baltimore, and uh, Zach, Pas- uh, Zach Pascal plays the Buccaneers. So yeah, fair. Just wanted to hear you guys say it. Yeah, so I can feel better. But for for all we know, Lamar's gonna put Lamar's gonna drop sixty on on Buffalo defense, and Beasley's gonna have to catch some passes. Okay, let's move to tight ends. The hardest spot. Um, this is the the list. Um, uh, Jacob Hollister. We all know about him. I can't believe this. This is the list. This is the waiver wire rankings for. This is the list of. I'm just going to give you name these names. This is the top seven of the. Uh, you need a tight end for for your fantasy playoffs. The number one is Jacob Hollister. Number two is Mike Gesicki. Number three is Jordan Howard. Believe it or not, I got 61 yards, six catches, 61 yards. But uh, David Nyoku, Tyler Higby. Had a good game, uh, over a hundred yards with uh, 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 Gerald Everett out, and uh, Ian Thomas, Carolina. Um, I guess Ian Thomas is, is there because I think um, uh, uh, Greg Olson got hurt, didn't he? And uh, Caden Smith of the Giants uh, got seventy yards against the Packers. So, Kevin, do you like any of those guys? Who? who... Uh, yeah, Higby is the guy I go with here. Um, I know. Goff had like basically a career day, which isn't going to happen every week, but, um, Higby really, you know, is going to step up, take some targets out, especially while Brandon Cooks doesn't look 100%. Um, Cup isn't as involved in offense as 
he was earlier in the season when he was like the wide receiver three. People were ranking him like that. That was crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I like Higby. He had almost 100 yards and a touchdown last game. He's got the Seahawks this week who gave up 50 and a touchdown to Kyle Rudolph last week. They're 29th against tight ends this season. So I'm pretty comfortable rolling out Higby. Mm. Uh, besides Higby, who do you like, uh, Jono, on that list? Uh, I'm, I'm going Mike Kosecki. He finished this week as the number two tight end. Uh, that was before Kyle Rudolph. I don't know if Rudolph had a bigger game than uh, than Gusecki did, yards-wise. But uh, Gusecki's been good over the last few weeks. His targets have gone up a lot. Um, he's, average, he's had at least six targets in his last uh, five games. He had seven in the last two. He scored touchdowns in two straight games, and this... This was his best game of the season against the the Eagles. I know the Eagles secondary is garbage, but he's got the Jets this week. And I think he's there with Miami looking to go a little younger, looking to see what they have in guys like Kaseki. Uh, he's getting more opportunity and he's making the most of it. So that wraps up our, uh, <clears throat> that's wraps up our look at uh, if those, any of those guys were left over on the waiver wire and uh, you need to, uh, you want to uh, pick over the leftovers. Those are some of the guys that you might want to uh, think about. If you need those, uh, if, you, if you're wondering about your flex spot, generally the flex spot guys, aren't they? Most of these guys, I would say. Yeah. Oh, and I have a cool stat in Gusecki that I forgot because I, I wrote this down in the oh, waiver wire, but sure. I forgot to mention it here. Uh, he is, a cool, according to Pro Football Focus, he is fourth among tight ends in passing down snaps like routes run, only behind Zach Ertz, Travis Kelsey, and Greg Olson. So the opportunity is there. He's always running routes. So if he's open, he's going to get those opportunities and targets. Yeah, I guess. The only problem is Miami. Hmm. The man doesn't block. If he's out there, he's catching passes. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, let's uh, move on to uh, panic button time. Now, uh, now, we didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this. So this is going to be kind of the top of our heads, basically, for uh, moving on, for uh uh, panic button. We'll do the moving on up right after. But uh, Kev, have you got uh, have you got a panic button? A guy that uh oh, it's the playoffs, and I've got to start this guy. Or um, it's the usual suspects now. OBJ hasn't had a hundred yard game in six games. You got Brandon Cooks, who's not doing anything. David Johnson, utterly useless. Well, save some, <laughs> for, save some Brown. for us, will you? <laughs> no, Marquise Brown. I mean, these are literally just people on my team that I I've been about. Uh, okay. Marquise Brown is on and off, and don't really blame him too much. Um, I don't know who else. Who else we got? Nick Chubb is getting the majority of his valuable touches taken by uh, Kareem Hunt. That's actually a good one. Let's go with that one. Nick Chubb. Um, he did have Chubb. 16 carries. He did have 16 carries and one catch for what is that 79 total yards but um compared to kareem hunt who we you know we didn't know what his role was going to be but kareem hunt had 12 touches for math kevin 65 yards and a touchdown and kareem hunt is definitely being used more in the passing game he has 25 targets in his last four games so uh not fantastic but can we also say that kareem hunt has been proven not to be a system running back like everybody thought he was going to be so much worse without kc but he's like a legitimate starting like star running back he doesn't need andy reed and, and that offense he's good at football yeah. that of being a human being yes yeah he's Definitely. good yeah he's good at football like uh john you got a panic button for us if that uh yeah kevin it, gave you a list it's not, i won't take his list i'm not going to complain about his team too but uh I don't even know if it's a panic button, just more of a, I don't really trust starting him in the playoffs as Aaron Jones. Yeah, uh, I was going to say him. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, I was going to mention him, actually. He was going to yeah, be my job. I'll pick somebody else, but go on. Over the last four weeks, he's finished RB45, RB3, RB48, and RB39. Uh, he's super inconsistent, like the Packers offense. You don't know what they're going to do. Jamal Williams can, he's also pretty good, apparently. Uh, and you just don't know where that ball's going. Every Green Bay coach is going to keep saying, we have to feed Aaron Jones more, we have to feed Aaron Jones more. It happens for one week. You don't know which week it's going to happen. And I don't know if you can trust them in, in the playoffs. Obviously, I think if you have him, you have to start him. But, man, that's so risky. He is uh, he is a risky start. And, uh, I mean, he's had, a like, of course, it was a snow game. and But Jamal Williams is out yardaging him. I mean, he is, Aaron Jones is no doubt, he's no doubt the better back, but... Right now, he doesn't look but like Jamal a better Williams back. is a better interview. Yeah. <laughs> Jamal Williams is like an 80 great interview. He is awesome post game. Sorry, Richard. No, <laughs> I really have to get that out there. No, that's fine. Uh, though he's, he's, he's not a, I know he's not a good interview. I've, I've seen him in interviews. He's not, yeah, he's not the, he's not the greatest. I mean, 
Yeah. Um, I guess my guy, and I, I suppose well, he was he was actually, uh, but I'm I'm not going to say uh, Saquon Barkley again because I already mentioned him last week as the uh, as the guy. But um, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit concerned about starting Austin Eckler. Uh, I know he got I know he got a touchdown and 51 yards receiving, but I I don't think his I think he could I think he could fall off just at any given uh, any given week, and I think that could oh, I could almost say the same for uh, Melvin Gordon, but I, it's it's but I don't because uh, I mean he's starting to get he got 20 carries and 99 yards in the last game. But I'm I'm a little bit concerned about the uh, Chargers offense and and Philip Rivers, so I'm kind of wondering about whether I'm I'm a little worried about starting a guy like Austin Eckler. I'm a little more comfortable starting Melvin Gordon. So if I if I have Austin Eckler, mm-hmm. he's a nervous start for me in 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 fantasy playoffs for me. So he's he's kind of my he he's a guy that I'm nervous about starting in in fantasy playoffs it could easily go it could easily go south he's had he's had how many games where he's gone south uh uh he's he's had a handful of games where he's gone where it's where he's where he's actually gone nowhere and uh he's almost due for a for a down game but he's against jacksonville apparently it's a good matchup but you know we always say that good matchup it's gonna happen so i'm not i'm not so sure about uh about him and the, uh, the, uh, the, this offense in general. Uh, I guess we can go to, uh, well, unless you guys have a comment on Austin Eckler, are you guys trusting him or do you guys trust him? Um, tough too. I mean, that Chargers offense, real shake. Um, I mean, he's not running the ball particularly well. You're basically counting on them falling behind and throwing the ball to catch up. I don't know. I'll probably play him just because, um, he's a good bet to catch five to six. I mean, he's like a souped up James White. Actually, John, that's a good question for you. What are we doing about James White? Because I don't know why Sonny Michelle didn't play at all last week. Uh, the Pats had to throw. They were, they got behind early. And Michelle can't catch him. Yeah, they did. Behind that much. Yeah, but Michelle wasn't doing anything anyways. Michelle doesn't look good. He and the offensive line is like just beat, like beat to hell, and they can't create anything. So you have to. It's quick throws. That's the only like all they can do. But the receivers so can can't. I, can I roll out uh, James White this week? Yes, you can. Gonna fall behind against Casey. You're assuming that Mahomes is better than Deshaun Watson. Like you don't know. That's, Maybe running quarterbacks are just. <laughs> I, mean, I don't well, know. I mean, like, um, right, so am I going with Eckler or am I going with White? Uh, I go with James uh, who White. Do the, who do the Chargers have? Yeah, the Chargers have Denver. Yeah, I would. I would go James. Oh, White. Uh, the Chargers have uh, oh, Jags. Yeah, yeah, the Jags. Yeah, Jags. Sorry, I'm looking at last week's stats. Um, yeah, I'd probably go White. This is you're, yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go White. Coming off of last game. And seeing as I he's like the only Devin Singletary against Baltimore, that would be more your expertise. No, your run defense and how much Allen's gonna have to throw. Uh, I mean, we just got gashed by Mostert, so I'm not. I'm a little confused with that. I've got to do something. Josh yeah. Josh Jacobs got 104 yards against uh, against Kansas City. True. We'll put it like that. different but, kind of but, back though. But I know this that that kind of that kind of says Sony Michelle, doesn't it? Nothing says Sony Michelle anymore. <laughs> but you know how these things go. You know, until the Dol- until the Dolphins game, nothing says Sony Michelle. <laughs> uh, and I, I guess I guess one more one more name I can throw out there for a scary start is Devonta Freeman. Obviously, um, hasn't yeah. done anything hasn't done anything since week six. Oh, I mean, he got hurt and well, the he did suck. But so... even before even before he got hurt, though, I mean, yeah. Well, no, the the Falcons' offensive line is not good, and Freeman looks like he's lost two or three steps because of all the injuries he's had to deal with. Uh yeah, I know. I know Carolina's run defense is not good, but he's low ceiling, low floor uh, until further notice. Okay, uh, yeah. and uh, so I guess we'll move on to moving on up. Moving on up, uh, Jono, who's a guy you like uh, to kick off the fantasy playoffs? Um, man, should I, how, how deep a league am I playing in? Because I have a really deep one, and I have like a pretty normal one that I that I that I like, but. Uh, I'll go the normal one, I guess. Uh, I'll go Darius, guys. He's He oh, looked great game. against the Panthers. Uh, 129 yards, two touchdowns. He's shown ability to break big runs and big receptions since he's come back. And, you know, Adrian Peterson had a good game too, but I think Geis is way, way more versatile, especially against the Packers. They may have to throw a lot more, so I think Geis is going to be out there more often. And, yeah, I think they're kind of... Obviously, he's going to be uh, be the guy next year with whatever quarterback happens to be back there. But I think he's going to get more opportunities, uh, at least 10 rushes, probably four or five targets. And 
yeah, Geis is moving up after, finally after two years of injuries. Uh, my guy moving on up, uh, obviously, uh, uh, he's starting to get a little more carries and more involved. I think Rashad Penny. Uh, it kind of surprised me actually that uh, they used him. They said they were going to use him a little bit more, and and they did. Um, he's against the Rams, which is in, which is a so-so matchup for uh, for running backs. But uh, Rashad Penny. I'm I'm starting to think, yeah, okay. He's got a nose for the end zone too. Right now, he's hot, and it's always good to ride a player while they're while they're hot. It's because, like you say, a guy like Aaron Jones, cold. I think right now, which 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 guy I'd rather start? I'd rather start Rashad Penny over over Aaron Jones. There's a take for you. Uh, a take. That is Very a take. Strong take. Very of strong. Of all the take. takes I've heard, that is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a take. I'd rather start. I'd start. I'd start uh, Rashad Penny over Aaron Jones this week. To be Penny only got that first, the second touch. No, the first touchdown, the run, because Chris Carson said, "Hey, bud, do you want this touchdown? You need one." Like Chris Carson literally gave the man his touchdown. <laughs> but I know, but this was against this was against Minnesota. It was supposed to be tough against the run. The, you know, seventy four yards, uh, one one receiving touchdown. So. I mean, uh, Russell seems to be happy. They were, I don't know, it was a bit of a party. Did you see that ridiculous dance at the end? Uh, oh, that when, was so good. Come on, that was so good. That was from some new order, I think. They they showed a, a clip on, I yeah, it wasn't ridiculous. No, it was good. It was one of the better ones. Who scored that touchdown? That I don't was remember. Moore. Was that, was that Moore's touchdown? Okay. Moore, yeah. Because I remember... I, the best part about that video is Penny standing off to the side of everybody dancing because he doesn't know the choreography, just standing there awkwardly until they're done. Just the best part of that. <laughs> yeah, Russell Wilson came running in there and he kind of messed it up a little bit. I guess he didn't know that they were doing mm-hmm. it. In a, I don't know, but it, it looked choreographed. They had it already. It was it was him. It was Jerron Brown, DK Metcalf, and uh, Tyler Lockett, and of course David Moore. So. They got a new. They got a new dance team going on. Yeah, Josh Gordon didn't didn't participate. <laughs> he wasn't been, on the field. That would have been funny if he did. <laughs> just run off the bench and participate. I just cannot see. Yeah, just run off the bench. Yeah, well, I don't know. I maybe maybe I don't know if Jerron Brown was on the field at the time. But anyway, a lot of fun stuff in that game. But anyways, my, I stick by that. Uh, Kev, uh, you're a batter up. For your uh, moving on up guy, what who's if, your... What if they have it choreographed for the four guys and the four guys aren't on the field that touch Are they audible to another? Do they have, like, multiple ready? That's a good question. But is it... If somebody runs off the bench, is that a flag? Like, you add, like, 10 yards to the to the kickoff? I don't know if... That, I mean, I don't... What's that rule? Like, can I... Like, am I allowed to run off the bench and join in a choreographed touchdown celebration? I mean, I always feel like when defenders get picks and stuff like that, and they run over to the opposite end zone to take a picture, like people run off the bench with, them. like that's for sure. Because yeah, I always okay. see Mark so. Ingram in our defensive. So <laughs> I think, like, if you if you keep your helmet on, I think it's yeah, okay. Because what I always see people get flagged is when they run in with their helmet. On. Okay, so obviously then Gordon was just not part of the choreography team. Yeah, I guess that's not. Sucks here. No, he wasn't. It was those four guys: DK, Jerron Brown, Tyler Lockett, and David Moore. And that was lots. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it kind of makes kind of makes Josh Gordon look like a bit of a loner, doesn't it? Um, anyway, Kev, uh, moving on up for playoffs. You got anything bolder than me? Um, um, no. I mean, the guy I was gonna go with is is Miles Sanders. Um, Ooh, guy's been trending upwards since the bye. He's handled uh, fifteen, then seventeen, then twenty two touches his last three weeks. I know Jordan Howard's been banged up, but it is what it is. He's increased his output from his yardage output from 47 to 86 to 105 in three straight weeks. Tacked on a touchdown last week. Uh, 14 pass targets in the last week. Um, I don't know. I think he's a good play. I think he's uh, the offense is just kind of in a strange place right now, and their pass catchers all stink. So uh, it makes a little bit of sense for them to go see what they have with Miles Sanders a little bit, I guess. Yeah, it's a, that's a good choice, and uh, they got a pretty good uh, lineup down the stretch for the fantasy playoffs. You got the Giants, then they're at Washington and then they are at home uh, against Dallas in the, a big game for with playoff implications so that's uh that's that's pretty good but I think the one thing there's one thing I kind of noticed is that how, how come Jay Ajayi didn't sort of take over the uh Jordan Howard role he's not he's not doing anything that as far as uh it's it's all it's all Sanders. Or I think uh, Jay Ajayi got like two carries. A lot of people were rushing to the waiver wire to get Jay Ajayi, and he turned out to be a bust. Like, kind of thought he would just 
at least fill in for Jordan Howard while he was off with the... He's got a stinger or something. But, I mean, you got to consider that he's just signed in Week 12. Like, there's a reason he just signed in Week 12. It's not like he was in high demand. Yeah, but this was Miami. I mean, he got six carries against Seattle. Miami's a good team. You heard Doug Peterson. Well, yeah, Doug Peterson. Apparently, his job's not in any jeopardy. I mean, he should be. He won the Super Bowl, too. I know you can't, but I don't know. As far as Nick Foles goes, uh, I guess we can... I don't want to close out on a low note with with Nick Foles, but eh, uh, it seems like he was just, I don't know, he was, I, it seems to me that Nick Foles was just a man of the moment. It was just, it's just some, some people just have their moment and that was just um, Nick Foles' moment of his life to be, he was at the right man at the right time and I just don't think he can hold down a, a regular starting quarterback job. I think he's just meant to be a backup, um, emergency backup. I just don't think it's... I just don't... I, as much as I like Nick Foles, and I think he's a great guy, and he won a Super Bowl, but uh, it's just, just... just, I think that's just the way. I mean, the way it is for him, for him and his... Uh, he's just a man of destiny, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he's the league's best backup quarterback. If you need to win a Super Bowl, just have somebody hurt your, your starter, and then Foles will come in and, you know, be a record setter in relief. Yeah, I... It's just, he's just not cut out for the for the for the starting for a starting job. It's it just didn't happen for him. I mean, the fact that he got hurt, he was hurt most of the year. Uh, it's just one of those. He's just one of those people. It's just uh, a man of the moment. So, anyways, that's our show uh, for this week, guys. Good luck in your playoffs, eh? Yeah. Thanks. Good luck so, to you too. Who are you guys playing this week in uh, our league? I have Keith. No, I don't have Keith. I have uh, Adam. A case, whoever that is. Okay. The Lamar Jackson owner, so I'm not happy. Oh, you just beat me last week, I think. No. No, that's not true. That was Jared. You actually had a good team, so no. I might just stink. You, you uh, scored like uh, 300. My team stinks. You, you had like oh. 300 more points than I did. I like, that's upsetting. My, te- but... my team was actually awful. I just had a fortunate schedule. I have a bye week, so I don't I don't play this week. I'm waiting for the winner of John Owen. I had most I had most points scored against somebody. Who, who am I got? Who am I waiting the winner of? Is it you, John Owen? It, it's, yeah, it's me. Dude, I'm waiting for you to see if you... Let me look at the bracket here. It Hang will be second. me. Confidence. Oh, no. Uh, it'll be AJ or uh, Keith. Oh, that means I get Joe. Damn it. All right, you get fine. Joe. Yeah, you're against Joe or Adam. You're playing Joe. You're playing Adam. Did you play Adam? You just played Adam? No, I just played Keith. Oh, you just played Keith. I have Keith. Adam this week. All right, okay. So, I, I, yeah, I don't have any. Uh, I have a bye this week, so I have to wait for the Ooh, winner of I also AJ. have a bye this week. <laughs> <laughs> Consolation uh, but- number one seed. Let's go. Let's get it. Yeah, if you get uh, if you win this bracket, you get the you get the first choice next year of Oh yeah. So I can pick Lamar Jackson first overall. You can Could you actually? You... No, I would not do that. Who uh, Derek Henry? <laughs> no, I'll probably yeah, I, I It's gotta be McCaffrey, come on. You know what? I mean I was I'm wa- probably gonna take Jerry. Well, that's about all the time we have on the Fantasy Edge. Uh, I want to thank uh, my co-hosts, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Ho, and uh, we wish you the best uh, for your fantasy playoffs in Week 14. Take care and join us on the Fantasy Edge next week with uh, more interesting chat about who you should pick up or drop for your fantasy playoffs should you move on. We hope you do. Take care, everybody, and see you next week.